photography was uh, actually the last thing that I ever wanted to be. As a teenager, I tried out um, all sorts of art forms as um, a means of expression. Then in um, 1986, I discovered a predecessor of the color laser copier, which we now know. And these works on the photocopier were um, an exploration into why and um, how does meaning get into this paper. So I approached photography through its degradation and, and analysis in the truest sense of the word. I realized that uh, the photographs that I took for making these photocopy works were actually more interesting than this technical filter. In the late 80s, there was suddenly a whole new type of dance music, what you call acid house explosion. I realized, you know, that I'm actually now in the middle of a youth movement that was never there before. I had this strong desire to uh, sort of show <laughs> the broader world um, how, you know, this is an alternative to the normal lives people live. Looking for definitions of identity was clearly a, a major driving force in, in my work in the early and mid-90s. I think the sort of two positions, the individual and the crowd, is the framework in which I experience life. It's the one-to-one the -one experience, starting from myself. I look for what people share rather than what, what divides us. I make my work coming from two different angles. One is, um, is a pure formal visual interest, inventing new pictures. And on the other hand, I want what I do to have a social impact, to somehow not be politically neutral. I do find that conventions are there to be tested, and that's what I use when I um, show um, deviant behavior or, <laughs> or want to challenge conventions. Like this uh, picture of um, Alex and Lutz, uh, where he looks at, uh, at her crotch, you know, where he's sort of bending over and, and uh, looking between her legs. You know, it's already a reality, you know? it's like a parallel world. Say with portraiture, I'm not interested in, in pictures where I feel that the photographer has not risked him or herself as much as the sitter. When I go into a portrait situation, I don't have a psychological safety net. I need to be as vulnerable as the sitter in order for something to come out. What's uh, fascinating about portraiture is to get a glimpse of uh, the fragility of a person combined with um, a sense of their strength and beauty.
This is called Like Praying, 1 and 2, from 1994. It is uh, a diptych that I took in, um, in two parts. It is a reflection on two observations I made in the same year. The position of prayer, that this position is similar to one assumed in certain S&M scenes. This submission to God and submission to a dominant sex partner uh, ultimately has the same physical shape. The bottom one was, was first, and that was a self-portrait. I just used myself as an actor in, in the picture. The other one was a month later, using a friend called Paul. And one is by daylight, and the other is uh, at night with a flashlight. But because the shape and the location is exactly the same, there's, I think, also the slight coldness of the top picture with a slight warmness of the bottom picture, which, again, is a contrast the eye likes and so the two become a couple even though they are such uh, different pictures when you look at them. The life for me is a, is a delicate act. It's like a walk on a tightrope. You know, using the things as uh, even, even as symbols but then undermining their clear meaning. Still lives come from, often from objects of the everyday life, things that, that surround me, but that I have somehow arranged over time. The main fascination I have with um, view from above is that you can see these millions of individual decisions that uh, people have taken over the years. And it brings me into perspective uh, with myself. The strange thing that I observed that I've done even as a child or, or teenager, you know, the things that moved me first somehow stuck with me. And my very first uh, visual in initiation was astronomy. Every night uh, that was a clear sky, I spent out looking at the stars through the telescope. Visually, I was um, very at home in this very abstract world. To know that abstraction comes from somewhere deep inside me and has a, has a real foundation in my experience, somehow um, I find that um, it helps the work for me. Now with the abstract work, I use the viewer's insistence that it must be something that they look at. I use this um, impulse and show things that actually, uh, you know, are not figurative. And uh, the desire to see something in these pictures uh, m uh, then makes them figurative. And so the, the people come up with all sorts of um, associations which, um, which they wouldn't if, um, if it was a canvas. With the abstract work, I do exactly what photography is designed to do. It's designed to collect light. Uh, 
a picture of the sky, um, the 56 Concorde pictures, for example, um, are also color field pictures. To me, that was always clear that this is also an abstract picture. I think um, working with the picture, making the picture, defining what the picture is and what the subject is and making it is uh, one half of my work. But the other half is uh, contextualizing it in space, thinking about it, how can I um, present it. I found that showing my photographs in galleries allowed me to do things that I couldn't do on the printed page. In the end, uh, a map forms on the wall uh, where, you know, little place, spaces uh, can maybe take that picture and then if these three uh, create an in interesting dialogue uh, if they are close together. I also want the viewer to uh, be free to attribute value to the object. Besides photographs, I also um, do installation pieces and video works. When I'm standing in a nightclub on my own, I often stare at the lights and observe how they move like these little robots. You know, it's all about sex and body and dancing and drinking and social interaction. But at the heart of it is also, you know, the light, just pure abstract light.